I, I really tell you, I feel like we had something, I knew we had something special when we sat in that room. Before one video was shot, before one damn thing was done, I, because it just, you look around the room, there's just, everywhere you look at it, there's people that are, are, are fucking deadly good at writing skateboard. And, and Mike's a highly motivated guy who's up to that, you know, up to that point in my life, I, I'd seen him just make everything happen. So, there was a lot of motivation in that room and a lot of talent in that room, so I, I felt like it was the right room to be in. Yeah, I think the gates, the floodgates had opened for people to be creative and, and, and there was all kinds of different schools going on. There was, there was technical schools. Ray Barbie was, you know, going for it. Jason Lee was technical, you know, uh, there, there was uh, Tom Knox. There was a lot of skateboarders that were pushing uh, just all, all these envelopes. Speed, hauling ass, being technical. Um, and uh, I just think it once it opened up where people could go, okay, I can do... Uh, people that wanted to go big can go big, you know, and, and Duffy started going big and these guys, you know, just, people started really pushing it. Uh, I, I would say the Transworld Skateboard has a huge influence on skateboarding. Um, I think it is, in my, in my mind, it has always, you know, maintained its status as like the, the you know, the king of skateboard magazines. It's, it's, it's always been right there, the, you know, the photography has always been stunning. I think it's always, it's, I mean, in my heart of hearts, I, I always think, it, I look at it to be like a step above. It's like the skateboard magazine that's, that's done by, by artists, and the, the photography is brilliant. I mean, and, uh, you know, you can just go on a list of photographers that have worked for this magazine, and they're, you know, they're pretty, pretty genius and creative uh, artists. Mix that with, with a lot, of, with a true 100% love of skateboarding, and you're going to have a great, great magazine. I got the, um, I got a pro spotlight. Uh, and when that that pro spotlight came out. It, it re, that, that had a uh, changed my it changed my life. It changed my whole situation. Um, that was kind of like the like the pinnacle of, of, of what I was doing and, and what we were filming and how we were skating. And then I got this pro spotlight and it went out. And I think my interview uh, p p people from any walk of life could read it and understand it. I think it was kind of more from a um, working man's perspective than some posh or some. Fancy. What changed for me is I just, you know, I would go, I'd go anywhere and people know who I was then. After that interview, people knew who, who, who for real knew who I was, like anywhere in, in the world as a skateboarder, which, you know, which was, uh, was different. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I like Dan just because he, he, you never knew what you were going to get when you saw him. You never knew what side of Dan you were going to get. I mean, sometimes he'd be real quick and angry with you, and the next minute he'd be joking. He always had some like nuttiness that was about to happen or he he was setting up I mean for him I think it, you know it was it was about making the photography and and making things look just unbelievable he wanted you could he wanted things not only to be technically on a skateboard well but he he wanted all of it to visually just blow people away and you could tell that's what his gig was but for him I think half the fun was it really wasn't actually shooting the picture it was all the bullshit that it took to get to that point. It was, you know, hopefully breaking some laws, hopefully getting ourselves in a situation that may or may not get somebody killed. More of that, the more that he loved it, you know? And he used to come, you know, to my house and just crawl in my window and be like, okay, get up, and everybody out. People were hung over, like, who's this crazy dude in the house? And like, we're gonna go skate. He, he called it walking the line. So he would go, we're gonna walk the line today. And uh, that was that was like his that was his you know nickname for we're gonna put you, Matt, in a terrible situation that you may get killed in. But I'm gonna take my camera, so don't worry, we'll get the shot. <laughs> so that's what he just come up with, you know, come up with things that would be uh, you know kind of death defined to some degree before before people took that to the ultimate limit, you know. You know, I I have to say it was probably Mark Gonzalez. Uh, just because, just because, as a street skater, uh, or or as a guy who likes to ride skateboards down the street sometimes to find the to ramp, I, I just, I, uh, you know, the way he does what he does, just, you know, affect, it affect it affected skateboards, it affected me, and I and I, you know, you wanted to be part of that, and and, and I, I say that also because not just how he skateboarded, but how he looks at life and how he looks at what you skateboard. I mean, just watching him skate made me skateboard different. And made me look at things differently. Like never, I would stop looking at that. Like you can't do anything on that. Instead of that, you know, look at it. Like what can you do on it? And and there is no, there is no no in it. You can just do whatever you want to do. Free yourself of that shit. And and you can, I think it opens you up as a skateboarder. And I, I kind of learned that just by watching, by watching Mark skate.